old were you at the time when um, when you took on these habits? Uh, I would say, I would say kind of came in round. So the f- first time I was really introduced to habits was when I was uh, in middle school. And this is where my parents are really smart. Uh, they, and they talk about this in The Power of Habit by Charles wow. Dickens. Well. Okay. Um, the, I had a, a, a major injury. I had a spiral fracture of my tibia playing mm-hmm. football. Yep. And they use that, like that catastrophe in my life. And the book talks about this, using really bad or harsh moments in your life to create yeah, huge changes. Yeah. A lot of times people won't change otherwise. So if you mm-hmm. have a company and you want to get them to improve their safety standards, they're not going to do it unless some tragic thing happens, like someone dies or yeah. someone gets really mm-hmm. hurt. And then they're like, oh my gosh. And everybody in the company is like shocked by it. And then that's when you can make a big change. Yeah. So I got hurt. And that's when they started introducing me to vitamins. And they're like, hey, Ian, you know, if you don't want to get hurt again, you should start taking your vitamins. You should start mm. sleeping, taking mm. your nutrition. So you see, and slowly they started introducing things. And I didn't really get it at, at that point. I'm like, why are you guys making me do all this stuff? It just seems kind of unnecessary. But I listened to them and just did it anyway because they're my parents and I was pretty young. Yep. But then when I got to high school, I really started to see how those habits, I was really different than a lot of other kids. And they didn't know what they wanted from life. They were just going to school every day just because I was like, no, like I'm, I'm from Toronto, but I'm like, I wanted to live in the United States. So I'm like, the best way to get there is to get a track scholarship. And um, that's, that's what I was like locked in and into doing. And I, I ended up doing that. But then when I got to college, it was like yeah. a whole nother time because now my parents weren't there anymore. So yeah. I that parental guidance to help keep me on track it's like i had to do it all on my own mm-hmm. in the first year there it's really hard to do that but i realized again what the vision i had i said i wanted to go to the olympics and i knew i wasn't going to get there unless i was able to um continue adopting those those habits and staying on that, that correct path mm-hmm. so your parents were very supportive like they they gave you the the guidance that you need that they, they gave you the um the, the book on, on habits and that's what really taught you on how to, you know, uh, improve yourself and then constantly train. And then eventually, yeah, you had the idea of, of getting into the Olympics, wasn't it? It was just, um, yeah, yeah. You, really... you know, um, one, one thing I, I strongly do not believe in is I'm not a fan of the idea of a self-made person. Mm. Um, I think someone, even if it's not someone's parents, someone has helped someone along the way, like yes. someone has given you help. And you should be seeking help. You should be seeking mentors. You should be seeking someone out there who, who believes in you. Um, mm-hmm. I was blessed in the sense that, yes, I, my, my parents, their athletic dreams, their parents didn't believe in sports at all. Mm-hmm. So they, their parents killed their athletic dreams and they didn't mm-hmm. want to do that to their, ch- their children. So yeah. um, they were supportive and they were willing to read and learn themselves to be able to um, pass better information down to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was definitely a huge um, thing that uh, was was very helpful for me growing up.